Hello, today we're going to do a very quick discussion on torque. Torque is a tendency of a force to rotate an object about an axis. So let's make this a top view of a door. And when you apply a force to a door to close it or open it, you are actually applying a torque as well. Let's say we apply a force, let's make it at an angle to make it a difficult example here, not nice and easy. At this angle, all right? Not every component of this force is going to be causing torque though, okay? Instead, the only component that's going to be applying the, the torque is the one that's perpendicular to the direction of motion. Okay? The distance that we care about is the distance from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied. So we care about the perpendicular component of the force, and the distance we care about is that perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to where the force is being applied. Okay? So in this case, our equation for torque be that torque is equal to F times R, where those two are perpendicular to each other. Okay? So not every, not this entire amount of force, because we know we have some that's a horizontal component, and so that horizontal component is just pushing the door into its hinge. Okay? If we had a wheel instead of a door, and we wanted to see what was the uh, the torque applied to that wheel, maybe it was a pulley, okay? So let's say we have the force of tension pulling down here on the pulley. Our R value would simply be just the radius of the door, or the of the pulley, excuse me, or the wheel, whatever we're looking at here that's rotating. And our equation would still be the same thing. It would still be F times R because those two are perpendicular to each other, okay? So keep that in mind, those two are perpendicular to each other. If we have an object that is in rotational equilibrium, not only is the net force gonna be zero, the net torque will be zero as well. So let's make it a little circle here. And let's say we had a pulley pulling on one side of it. And we had another one on the other side, a pulley that can pull by two strings. Okay. If it is at rest, then FT over here, the green one, and FT over here, the orange one, would be equal and opposite. Okay. If a wheel is spinning though, then there has to be a net torque applied to it. One of the FTs would have to be bigger than the other. Okay? If we had a seesaw, and there's a fulcrum there in the middle, and we wanted this to be at rest, let's say we had a mass here, okay, let's say we had a mass here that's closer, okay, the bigger mass would have to be closer to the fulcrum because the distance of the bigger mass from the axis of rotation is smaller. Okay, so we set this up. So notice that the torques would be equal, the torque from one side to the other. So torque over here is equal to torque over here. And the torques that are, the forces in this case would be the force of gravity. Okay, so we have mg times r, and that's gonna equal mg times r. Okay, because it's the force of gravity times the moment arm, what we call the R value there. And because this M is smaller, that means this R has to be bigger. Okay, so rotation equilibrium is when net forces and net torques are both equal to zero. All right, we have an object that's falling, rotating. So let's say we have like the a wheel, or I'm oh, sorry, <clears throat> the leaf on a table or um, you know, like an awning or something like that. When it's released, it's going to fall like this, correct? Okay, so it's going to stay, it's going to pivot around this point, but it's still going to fall. The way we treat the torque here, here is by saying the force of gravity, <coughs> excuse me, applies a force at the center of mass. So to find the torque here, our R value would be the distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass. So again, torque would be Fg times R, but the R is not the total length of the board, it's the distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass. If it was rotated about a point maybe here instead, then our R value would be smaller, okay? So R again, the distance from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied. If we're talking about an object falling, that force that's applied is the force of gravity. All right, Newton's second law rotationally. So we know Newton's second law linearly is that F net is equal to MA. 
Okay, let's talk about our rotational analogs. Our rotational analog of force is torque. Okay, so we can say not net force, but net torque. Our rotational analog of acceleration is angular acceleration, alpha. And our rotational analog of mass is rotational inertia. Okay, I value. Right, so our I value here is our rotational analog of that. So our Newton's second law rotationally is net torque is equal to moment of inertia times alpha. So torque equals I alpha. Is our another expression. So we have two expressions for torque. We have torque equals F times R and torque equals I alpha.